Hello, my name is Brandon Sills, and in this video, I'm going to give you a brief overview and an understanding of Azure Link Pro. And if you like the content, please make sure to hit that like button and click on subscribe, and I'll be continuing to bring you more content down the line. Now let's get into it. Azure Link Pro is a virtual audio routing solution for people who utilize interfaces from manufacturers like Focusrite, Tascam, and so forth. If you're using a Scarlet 2i2 or if you're using something very similar, this is something that can help you route audio in between different applications and on a larger scale than something such as Voice Meter Banana or VB Cable or other similar kind of solutions that are accessible online. So let's whiz through a couple of these screenshots and show you what you'll be dealing with. So when you start Azure Link Pro, this is the main screen that you're gonna pretty much land on. But this would be the ASIO settings section for it where you can set your sample rate, your buffer size, and how many channel in and out that you want to set up for your driver, which also corresponds to a few things that we'll cover in a little bit here. However, simply put, initialize ASIO, ASIO control panel, start ASIO, stop ASIO. Some of the basic features for starting and stopping the virtualization. And then down here at this section, it's just pretty much you know, whatever really works for you. If you know what you're doing here, toy with it. And now onto the main screen. And this is the main window, which you'll be dealing with all of your virtual routing. Now, a lot of this doesn't look the same as how it's going to look when you first set everything up and start it. Some of this is already just kind of pre-figured for my own personal needs, including what you see in terms of the routing between green, yellow, red, and so forth. Now, a couple of things to go over first. This bar at the top, it's pretty straightforward, whether or not if you want to record output to WAVE or whatever file format is provided, uh, what your interface is. And the only thing you really need to be concerned with is loading and saving profiles for various things like OBS Studio, Streamlabs OBS, Discord, you name it. Now this here is your input section. Your input section could be anything from the output of FUBAR, Winamp, Cubase, Reaper, Pro Tools, Ableton, VLC Media Player, your web browser. There's a bit of a trick to it, but if you are outputting something on, say, Speaker 1 or Speaker 2, you're going to notice where they're coming from. So some of the green lines are kind of those uh, drivers that are being utilized, like uh, Speaker 2 and Speaker 3, I believe. So pay attention to some of those. And this section here is your output section. For example, the top gray bar is what you're going to probably be monitoring all of your audio output on. The bottom line is going to be where all of your submixes are going to be going to. So for example, the one and two at the far left would be mix number one for me. So if I want people to hear me on my microphone in Discord, what I would wind up doing is routing that into Discord through the microphone input of mix one. And then this section here is network. I'm not exactly sure or understanding what all it does. I don't really need to tweak too much with it. So if anything, you probably don't really need to touch it. So you can just leave it alone unless if you're you know, willing to dive deep into it. Now, I understand that some of the software at first sight might be a little bit intimidating, but it's relatively easy. When you install this application, what you're going to do is have more additional audio drivers for playback and recording. And you just have to kind of figure out what you need out of it and then disable any of the mix and speaker outputs for Azure Link Pro. Disable any of them that you don't need in order to help limit how many uh, different drivers you can access regarding this for your input and output. And figuring out the routing isn't terribly difficult because you can see a lot of everything on screen as it's happening, whether or not if it's your microphone or if it's your game or whatever you're gonna see a visual representation of that so you can route that around accordingly and pretty much kind of go from there. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comment section down below and I will try to respond as soon as I possibly can. In the meantime, thank you for watching this video. If you haven't already, click like, click subscribe and all that fun stuff and I will be coming back with some more videos in the near future.